Hey everybody, Jessica, Pretty Prints and Paper, and I just wanted to do an alcohol ink on black tutorial by making two different dashboards. I'm going to be doing one with blending solution, and I'm going to be doing one with isopropyl alcohol. And I think the two effects are very different, and the techniques that you use for them are also very different, so I wanted to model what those look like. I'm going to be using these two plastic non-porous dashboards and I'm using T-Rex inks with the white. I'm going to be using these two colors from Ranger. You can use any brand that you like but these are the two that I'm using today. For my metallic I'm going to be using a Jacquard Pinata Brass. That's going to be the metallic. I really enjoy using the brass and the rich gold. I highly recommend those two. Others like silver and rose gold tend to be really really thick and they don't really incorporate or spread very well as a metallic on alcohol inks so I don't recommend that. Isopropyl alcohol, you can get this like first aid and stuff like that where it's available and at least a 91%, 97% isopropyl alcohol. Watercolor paints move around with paint brushes. Alcohol inks move around with air. So you need something to move the air around. On one hand, you could use something like a big straw, like a big straw. Like those little ones are just not as good. This is from a water bottle that I had and it's got kind of a thicker opening. You can use like a boba tea straw that would be much better. And then the other thing that I'm using is, I think it's called an airbrush dryer, but the only thing that matters is the wattage of the hair dryer that you use. I like this kind of straight handle because it's a little easier for me to maneuver, but as long as the watts on the hair dryer is 500 or below, that means that it'll be able to uh, blow around at a, at a much, much slower pace. A lot of the hair dryers that you typically use, you want as high of a speed as possible because you want to dry your hair faster. Those will be terrible for this. Do not use a regular high powered hair dryer. Use something that's a little bit lower powered. I will link those in the bottom in the description. So the first one I'm going to model is going to be white on black with the blending solution. You can get this at a lot of different craft stores now and I recommend that you try to look locally first and then you can look at Michaels and stuff like that. I think the one that I'm using is from Pinata and this one I'm going to be using a straw to move the air around. This is a little bit more accessible to folks. You don't have to buy as many products this way to get started, so I'm gonna use a straw first. I have a cloth here because the thing about blowing into a straw is that if you have hot air in there, it'll heat up and you'll condensate the air around you and you'll need to tap out the spit every once in a while so it doesn't get onto your painting. Okay, when I get started, I like to get set up in a couple of ways. I like to take the caps off of all the colors that I'm using and set those aside. And especially with the gold, I want to make sure it's shaken up so that the particles are just spread throughout. The white is accessible. The blending solution is accessible. I've got my station ready. And then from here, I'm going to talk to you first about what I'm going to do because what is a really cool thing about abstract and fluid art is that you have to be really present with the inks as they're flowing. So I'll try to explain as I go, but I'm going to preview it for you. I'm going to put down the blending solution first, then I'm going to add the white, and then I will add the colors, and then I will add the gold on top. You could do the gold later on, but I'm just going to add it right on top, and then I'm going to start moving it around. Uh, I try to eyeball it to decide where on this dashboard I want to add the ink and then I will go from there. I probably won't cover up the whole thing but I really like you know using maybe a band across the middle here and so we'll see if we can kind of go in that direction. I like to start on one side knowing that I can just spread it across later. I like the T-Rex ink because it's not as sedimented. And I add these separately because the white ink settles differently across so that um, it creates some interesting texture. So some places are much more pastel than others.
So I see that this white is much more subtle than other whites I've used in the past. So it's much more vibrant and saturated. So I'm going to add a little bit of the white to make it pop brighter. You don't want to blow too hard because you're going to spit on your work and you're also going to move some things around in ways that you probably don't exactly want. And this is the fun part where you get to play and you don't cover the whole area yet. And you're guiding the shape in one direction. Again, this is just one way to do it. You do not have to do this way. So sometimes when I see bigger densities of the ink, I kind of try to target that area and move it to the right. Because I know that that is going to be a lot more maneuverable than the areas with less ink. Okay, so there are some areas that I didn't get the ink to kind of cover. So instead of forcing that, I'm going to just add a little bit more of the blending solution. And then add some more white. You have to work a little bit quickly here so that you can do a little bit more control on the ink pool. going to touch these little spots here because they didn't quite get ink on them. So you might have noticed that there's times where the ink kind of starts to do wobbly things and uh, I wanted to smooth that out a little bit so you can kind of just again push that air a little bit and you'll notice that this is you know the color denim which is a blue and on here because it mixed with the with the wild plum color, the fuchsia color, it turned a little bit more of this muted purple, which is one of the fun things about this art, is that you can't really always predict what it's gonna look like. But now you, can, you, you play around a little bit if you want to, by gently guiding the metallic to where you want them to be. If you want some of that. Okay, so we are going to let this dry. You can see that it kind of went underneath here. Also, sorry for all like the very close up shots of my head and my face. That was not ideal. Sorry about that. I'll change the angle on the other one. But you can see that it's still super wet. So you're going to need to set this aside before you protect it. There's a, a spray called Kamar Varnish that I will just spray lightly on top of these pieces to give it some level of protection. For pieces that like I sell for hanging art, I will do two coats of that. And then I will also do a UV spray because it's being displayed and it's going to be in a lot of light. So I want to make sure it's protected from fading. But if it's just going to be something like a dashboard, I'll probably just spray the Kamar varnish once and then just make sure that it's just taken care of in my planner. If you're going to be doing this a lot, I will be the first to say that you should probably be using a respirator mask um, that is linked down below because if you're breathing in a lot of the blending solution there are chemicals in it that are toxic over time and with uh, increasing amounts so please take care of your respiratory health we're already in a pandemic we don't need to exacerbate our respiratory health even more so definitely make sure that you check out the link below if for what the kind of respirator that i'm using so that you can take care of yourself when you're creating art 
So I love this technique because it is a little bit controlled because you're using a, a straw, but when you see how the gold fades across and how these colors interact, especially with the white, it adds again that texture. Some parts are more pastel, some parts are much more saturated and deep, and it creates that favorite nebula effect that I have uh, where anything just looks like a cloud almost inside. So that is this technique, and let's see what this will look like with the isopropyl alcohol. We are keeping the same inks, we're still using the same ones, we're just using isopropyl alcohol that I put into an empty Bria Reese ink bottle, and your trusty hair dryer. So the ones that you're looking for, you want to make sure that you can see that there's a, a low and a cool setting. This cool setting is actually not as low as the low setting, but the low setting has heat. With isopropyl alcohol, the more that you're moving and the more heat that there is, the alcohol will evaporate and it'll set the inks faster. And so I'm going to be using the low setting. I haven't actually tried this before on a dashboard. And anytime you work with alcohol ink, the smaller the surface, the trickier it can sometimes be. Working with much larger surfaces, you can get a lot more forgiveness in your technique. So we're going to see how this goes. So again, I'm going to preview this mostly because I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me over the hairdryer. So I'm going to try again for that kind of band across the middle here by laying down the isopropyl first. And instead, this time, I'm actually going to cover most of that area that I want to cover instead of starting on one side and moving it across. This way, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to be using some ripple effects by drying the ink a certain way, and we'll see how it goes. Ink first, then white, then colors, and then the metallic. And with this, you can take your surface and start moving it around to cover up the area that you want before you start drying. I don't have a completely flat surface, so you can see that in the shape that the ink is taking on right now. Oh, this is not ideal. We're doing it live. All right, let's see what we can do with this. Okay, so I'm drying it, and then I'm going to let it ride back, kind of like a little tide. I have to be careful because the heat might warp the dashboard surface, so I'm not going to hold it in one place for very long. Anytime you hold it for a little while, it'll create a line, and then you keep going. So I'm noticing that it's drying, but without color. So I'm going to add some more white to see if it'll take. I'm 
covering up that big gold spot. Okay, I made some choices while I was working with the ink that I want to explain. You could see that, you know, a couple times I wanted to add more white because the, the color was just being lost because this particular white, I think it's really beautiful and really subtle. That it, it means that you need to use a little bit more of it in order to build up some of the brightness to be the backdrop of these colors to make it show up. So it's really, really nice because it's it's got a really beautiful consistency, but you're gonna need a little bit more of it to make the color pop. And then starting to dry from this side. So when you're working with the hair dryer, you're basically creating lines and textures and ripples by drying the edges of the ink pool and you're doing that by pushing it back and forth you're not ever blowing right in the middle that's only going to create a messy splotch you want to guide it by working along the side you're kind of being a shepherd to a flock you want to push and guide and then it'll dry the ink enough to create in the edge a ripple a line and then you kind of let the ocean wave go back and come back but a little bit further back dry it again and it'll come back come back 
even just a little bit further out, try it again, and you repeat this process. And the easiest way to start practicing is with more of this line here. And as you get more and more into it, you can kind of create different kind of shapes that rotate around a pivot point, create more focal points in your compositions and stuff like that. So you can always kind of go back over your work if you find that you didn't like a piece or you didn't like that there was that huge splotch of gold in the middle where I just covered over it. That's the beautiful thing about this and why non-porous surfaces are really great for practicing and doing this kind of art is that you can always go over it. You can erode it away like a little sand castle, cover it up, dissolve it, and then you can start over in that spot again. So you can see how these two techniques come out to have very different looks and they're both beautiful but just very different this one i find to be a little easier to be a cloud nebula type of thing and this one is just more like ripples and lines and more electricity in the in these or ocean lines in these but the techniques are are very very different so now i think what you can do here is you can touch this up if you don't like this extra little edge of gold you can always go back in with some isopropyl alcohol and just use a q-tip and you know erase that line a little bit and touch that up whereas you would never really want to go back in with alcohol with the main piece but you can touch up pieces of it with the alcohol it almost erases some of the ink i will kind of use use one type of solution per piece even though I know that you're technically able to mix them I just like to keep them for two different kinds of techniques depending on what kind of ink that you use you might find some sediment so it looks like you know the when a, a latte kind of is done you can kind of see the crumbles of the whipping cream or something like that um, that can show up in your inks as well and that kind of depends on the color and also the brand some brands have more sediment than others I really like Ranger I haven't really seen a lot of sediments on Ranger, but the thing that some of the Ranger inks do is that there's kind of multiple colors in them. So some of the pinks and purples, I've noticed that when you dry them, there's a little like yellow tint, tint to the purple. And then for some of the blues, there's a little bit of like a yellow or green-ish, so it doesn't stay true to one color. So it's just one of those things that you learn from studying each of the inks and learning more about it over time. So which one do you prefer? One or the other? I think I'm going to letter on one of them and use it as my like phrase of the year, which is orchestrate your life. So I'm going to see how that turns out. Um, if you have any questions, let me know down below. If you want to keep seeing more tutorials like this, I know there's a lot of range on my YouTube channel from bullet journaling, creative planning, calligraphy, and fluid art, but I honestly wouldn't have it any other way. So let me know down below if you have questions. I'll try to answer them. Otherwise, you can like, share, subscribe, whatever, but at the end of it, I hope that you enjoyed it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!